Hey YouTubers, this is that van guy again with another video. Uh, today we're going to be checking out part of my Christine car collection. Uh, I have quite a bit of Christine stuff uh, from multiple different brands. Uh, there's lots of different companies that make it. Uh, Christine cars or Christine branded stuff. Uh, so multiple different manufacturers make uh, Christine branded stuff from the movie. Uh, in 164 scale uh johnny lightning makes it auto world makes it green light makes it hot wheels makes it uh m2 makes some stuff uh there's a couple different castings from johnny lightning there's like a, a series of christine uh funny cars which are kind of got some weird proportions going on but they're a drag car and I think there's like uh, Ertl or Racing Champions might make a Christine car. Um, might be forgetting a few other brands. But yeah, a lot of people make stuff. And uh, it would be probably more than an hour video um, if I showed everything that I have in one video. So uh, today we're going to be focusing on some good stuff. This will just be like part one or uh, the first half of my Christine collection. Um, I have a lot of loose stuff and I have a lot of carded stuff as well. Um, but we're going to be opening up, uh, here's, uh, three different Christine card dioramas and we're going to be opening two of the three, uh, the two newer ones because I bought doubles so I could keep one carded and, uh, or keep one still in the original packaging and have one, uh, loose so I could open it up. So this is an older one that I found on eBay. This one we will not be opening because it's an older one. It's a little bit harder to get a hold of or it's more expensive. Um, it's not real old. You can see it says new for 2017. Diecast metal body and chassis soft rubber tires. Uh, silver screen machines. And uh, the card's not perfect on this but... Uh, just because of the graphics and stuff, I decided I wanted to keep it carded. So it's a 58 Plymouth Fury and a 67 Chevy Camaro in there. It also has, uh, this one is called, if you're familiar with the movies, if you haven't seen the movie, I highly, highly recommend you watch it. Uh, it's a great movie. It's like a car movie, and it's also kind of like a scary movie uh, rolled into one. So uh, this, is, this one's called Repertons Reckoning, and uh, the guy... The little figurine in there in the black leather jacket that's supposed to be Buddy Repperton. And this is uh, a scene from the movie uh, where Christine crashes into uh, Repperton's uh, 67 Camaro and smashes it, T bones it, and drives it into the filling station and then it catches fire. So uh, this is. Just a scene from the movie, and it has some really elaborate graphics. It has like a, it's like a diorama style packaging. It's got scenes from the movie behind it. So because it's so elaborate, it's kind of like a little diorama, and it <clears throat> is very detailed. I decided I wanted to keep it carded. Like you guys know me, uh, if you watch my videos, I'm a loose collector, and I tear everything. You know, there's been like eighty, ninety dollar vans that I bought that are like convention pieces from Japan or whatever and I just tore them right open so uh but if the packaging uh really accentuates the piece and makes it that much better then I would say it warrants uh keeping it in the packaging so uh here's a little info from the back of the card uh collect all four vehicles diorama 2017 release one and there's uh, other uh, cars here, Christine, uh, and then a Ghostbusters one, and then a little bit more advertising and stuff on the back. Collectors Club. Uh, if you want to uh, pause that little paragraph, or if you want to pause it, you can read that little paragraph there on the back. But yeah, this one is a very cool one. Uh, you don't see them that often on eBay, and they usually go for more money. Uh, and it's just really cool that it comes with like a little miniature in there, like a little dude. So, yeah, we're going to keep that one carded. And I'm not going to be opening that. 
Uh, but these other two dioramas we will be opening because, like I said, I bought doubles. Um, these have were just out maybe like six months ago now. Uh, later part of 2018. So they shouldn't be too hard to find. Uh, messing up my drop cloth here. But I'll try to hold it up so you can read some of this print if you want. If you want to pause it, you can read it. Uh, gives some info about the movie, I believe. Which is cool. A little bit dusty. This is release one. Uh, they also had some like Ghostbusters and some other uh, ones. This one is Darnell's Garage. Darnell's Do-It-Yourself Garage. So this is a diorama scene from uh, the movie where he parks his car in Darnell's Garage. Uh, which is kind of like a rent-a-stall uh, shop where you can work on your car because his parents wouldn't let him keep the car at his house. So he had to rent a stall at the shop and then that's where he worked on it and parked it. Uh, so here's more information uh, on the back of the card. Hopefully you can read that without getting too much glare. If you want to read it. There it shows the uh, Ghostbusters version. And then just more advertising of upcoming releases. But we're going to crack into this one. So let's see what's the best way to go about this. Just I got a nice sharp box cutter here. I'll just try to go around the edge. And then pull it out. Okay, we got a little platform with the car on it. And then we have another separate piece. Uh, and I believe this is made out of metal. It feels pretty heavy. So there's just the, the packaging. Just got like a cardboard backdrop. So get rid of the packaging. And here is the little, uh, feels like it's made out of metal, feels pretty heavy. So it's just kind of like a, you know, Darnell's garage was in a junkyard. So it's not the most posh or fancy shop. And they're just like old dusty parts laying around and stuff. Uh, kind of run down. Looks like it's got a stack of, uh, stack of tires there. Maybe like a little radio on top of a cabinet. Uh, a little workbench it looks like. With maybe uh, some sort of milling machine or a vice grip. A little desk. So just kind of like a bunch of automotive clutter. Shelving. Boxes. Give you an idea. And uh, there is, it is double-sided. This is like the outside of the building. I'm assuming this part would be like the roof on top of the building. The angled roof. And then on the inside, it's just got the angled roof from the inside. Where it would start to come up to a point. And you can see it's got windows there in the movie. Uh, there's some people that snuck through the windows. So, gotta have the windows there. But I don't think these were the windows that were snuck through, though. And uh, so I'll just set that to the back so it doesn't fold, fall over. It's not real, uh, it's not super flat on the bottom. Like, it doesn't have any platform, and it kind of is a little bit wobbly. Uh, if you have a super flat surface, it'll probably stay, but it wouldn't take much to tip it over. Uh, so I'm going to set it in the back so it can't tip over. Now we'll take a look at the car. Just on a cardboard uh, platform. Let's see how we can open this. There might be some sort of paperwork or 
uh, some other stuff that goes with this inside. We'll take a look. Nope. Just a couple of uh, twist ties. So I'll have to hold it in. Let's see if we can undo these without dropping the car. I could twist it up. I think I'm going to pause it so you don't have to sit and watch this. Okay. After struggling with mile, two mile long twist ties and a rubber band on the hood, I uh, finally got it all out of the packaging so we could take a closer look. Uh, it looks like it's got uh, it's got it's a pretty detailed piece. It's got rubber tires, uh, metal axles. Uh, I'm not sure if the base is metal or plastic. I think it might be plastic. Uh, and I believe the hood opens. That's why it's got the had the rubber band on it. Uh, pretty detailed interior. Looks like it's got uh, hub hubcap looking wheels. Pretty detailed piece. See if I can hold it up so you can get the. Uh, see if it'll zoom in. And see, it's got some license plate detail there. Tail light detail. It says Plymouth on the rear trunk. Trunk does not open, I don't believe. There's the wheels. Johnny Lightning. Well, it's got some nice rubber wheels on it, thicker wheels, metal axles, pretty detailed metal base, and let's pop open the hood, if we can, okay, there's the hood open, you can see the engine inside, give you a little closer shot of it. It's got some detail on the engine. Now this uh, engine is not the correct engine for this car, or at least the one in the movie. Uh, the movie had a special engine that had, uh, I think it had two four barrel carbs and had two round air cleaners on it. And this one just has the one frying pan style uh, single snorkel air cleaner on top. But the uh, one in the movie had dual air cleaners probably because it had dual carburetors um so the engine is not perfectly correct to match the movie but everything else looks fairly good i'm not sure about those uh hubcaps if those hubcaps are true to the movie or not or are very uh accurate but uh, overall i think it looks pretty good nice heavy piece metal body metal base so let's uh we'll close the hood kind of seems like it snapped there it's got some uh snap shut a little bit it's got some windshield wipers i don't know if we can really see the interior too much but it does have a steering wheel and a dash and fence seats so we'll set it in front of its little diorama here so you can get a, an idea what it would look like. So there's that, and that is the Johnny Lightning version. Now, uh, I believe the Johnny Lightning version was a little bit cheaper and wasn't quite as heavy. Uh, now we're going to go on to the Auto World one. Uh, which is a little bit more elaborate, a little bit more uh, expensive to buy, retail, and uh, uh, quite a bit heavier. So let's take a quick look at the packaging. A little bit dusty there. Accurate, scaled, die-cast metal body and chassis, rubber tires, opening hood, pristine and evil. 1958 Plymouth Fury. True 164 die cast. Alright, let's see what the scenic display. Highly detailed poly poly resin display. Film accurate screen details. Darnell's do-it-yourself garage. Now these are both owned by round two, I believe, Auto World and Johnny Lightning. So they probably, you know, use some of the same castings and stuff um 
you know, they are very similar. Here's some uh, screenshots from the movie. And same deal on the other side. Again, if you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend you rent it. You might even be able to find it here on YouTube if you search around. Or uh, you can probably rent it super cheap. It's an older movie and it's a popular one. Go to your local uh, video store. Uh, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Uh, if you want to pause it here, you can try to read that detail. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit further for you. If you want to pause it, you can read it. It's got some quotes from the movie. And then just some more Auto World advertisement stuff, future releases and whatnot. Okay, <clears throat> well let's crack into this one. Like I said, I bought two. So I can keep one in the original packaging, boxed up. And, uh, you know, I'm a loose collector. I like to play with my stuff. I like to let it breathe. Uh, just, you know, display it loose. So, got one so I could see what it's all about and open up the box. See what's all in there. Now uh, this comes with uh, some more uh, pictures, like scenery pictures from the movie, which is kind of cool. So I don't know if I want to keep that. Well, I have a second one, so we're just going to take this off. I might keep the back, the cardboard backing with the seat with the scenery on it. Um, but I do have another one still in the box, so, uh, but I'll just be careful cutting this open so that I can pos possibly keep it or reuse it. We got some, uh, twist ties here. Get these twist ties off. Definitely no one's going to be stealing this. It's going to take them a half an hour to get into the packaging, so they're not going to be able to be very sneaky when they're trying to pocket it in the store. Okay. So, let's push this through. All right, there we go. Got it out. So, yeah, we got some, some backdrop, which is kind of cool. Get rid of some of this packaging. And just set this back here. So this one does have a platform, which I like. It's uh, still feels like it's like kind of bent, like it doesn't. It's, the wall doesn't look like it's like straight up and down. Like it should be like this, but it seems like it's tilted back which is kind of weird i don't know if this metal got bent feels like it's made out this one feels like it's made out of metal but it could be like another plastic uh, you can see this one has it's kind of like a deeper more uh surround with a lot more detailed areas it's got like a little uh set of steps that go up to like a second floor or something it's just got a lot more toolboxes and parts and stuff so I'm going to try to zoom in on this. Maybe I'll put it on the turntable and uh, spin around. Maybe I can catch some specific angles of it. And you can just see what's all there. It's a little bit heavy for my turntable, though. Again, with the windows and the rusty roof. On the building. I'll stop it right there and just kind of zoom in on all the clutter and the junk. Different car parts and stuff. Looks like a, some tools, tires, gas can. All sorts of stuff. Pretty cool. Okay, well, we'll take this off and set it here, and then we'll 
here's the car part. More twist ties. So I'll pause it for a second while I get those off. Okay, I got it out of the packaging, got all the twist ties off. It comes with uh, some more cool uh, uh, pictures or screenshots from the movie. This is like the uh, grill, I'm sorry, not the grill, the uh, dash display inside Christine. Uh, sometimes it glows green uh, when the lights are on and stuff, or it'll sometimes gl glow red. I believe in the movie when Christine is upset. So that's kind of cool. Just a cardboard insert where the, the car was fit in. So we'll set that aside. Here's the car. Still got the twist ties on it. Let me get these twist ties off. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, got it, uh, all the stuff off of it. I'll take a quick look at it underneath. Uh, really tight wheels in the wheel well, so when they have these super large twist ties in there, you kind of want to roll the wheels as you try to pull the uh, the uh, twist ties out so you don't bend the axles or damage the wheels because there's just not a lot of extra room in there. You can see, uh, just want to make sure the wheel is on straight, but very detailed metal base on this one. Auto World logo there. If I can get it to focus. Uh, rubber tires. These uh, these hubcaps look a little more accurate or a little more realistic to me. Uh, doesn't look like the the windows are closed. So uh, no open windows. Uh, tinted black, so you can't see inside. Let me try to zoom in on this a little bit. There's the uh, license plate, the Plymouth badging on the trunk, taillights, grill, front license plate, get the hood open. There we go. There's the more, what I was talking about, the dual air cleaners. This is the uh, more accurate to the... Uh, movie this uh the engine in the movie had dual air cleaners like that so this uh this auto world version is definitely a little bit more realistic looking and a lot more detailed engine hubcaps the uh metal base so we'll give it a quick spin You can get out check out all the angles pretty good looking car and here's the backdrop behind it and we'll take this out put the car in there and that's what you get for the auto roll version uh, I think, uh, I guess it depends on how much you were looking to spend. I can't remember exactly how much I paid. I believe the Johnny Lightning one was around $15 and the Auto World was around $20. Now, if you're buying it on the secondary market, you're probably going to pay a lot more for it. But uh, if you're a big Christine fan, I guess I would lean towards the Auto World version because it's just a lot more detailed. <clears throat> and it just feels like it's built stronger, more metal. And uh, the car is a little more accurate to the movie. So those are the two and three uh, Christine dioramas. Uh, I'll quickly go through some of the other. Just give you a couple. Uh, a shot of uh, a couple of my Christine cars from my collection. Um, here's just a regular Auto World. And I'll probably be opening that. Nothing really special about this. This is just a regular Auto World release. Uh, I'm a fan of Auto World, but they really don't make... I'm You know, I'm into vans, and they don't make any vans. So, I don't really buy much Auto World. Um, I know my buddy, uh, Champion DJK, he's a huge Auto World. Uh, if you're into Auto World, check out his channel if you, if you haven't already. 
uh, champion DJK. I think he has every Auto World ever made or something close to that. He's always striving to get all the Ultra Reds and everything. So check him out. Um, but this is just a run of the mill uh, Auto World release. They make them in like probably 10 different colors. 58 Plymouth Fury. I know there's like a pea green one I saw and I just you know, I don't really need to have 12 of the same exact car, just in different colors. So I just picked a few that uh, I like the color. But this is just a standard Auto World release. Nothing too special about that one. Uh, here's a recent release from Greenlight. And like I said, some of these, like something like this, I would open because it's just a regular Auto World packaging. Nothing special about it. This, um, it's... Uh, a 68 Dodge Charger, but a lot of people make a 68 Dodge Charger. Uh, and not everyone would know that this blue Dodge Charger, 68 Dodge Charger, is uh, the one that was from the movie. But if I keep it in the packaging and don't open it, and it's got the Christine packaging, then they know it's a car from the Christine movie. So I probably won't be opening this one. I probably will keep it <clears throat> in the packaging. So I'm just going to give you a shot of the uh, packaging so you can check it out. I'm sure you can. This one was released recently, so I'm sure you could find it on eBay or other secondary market sites. Or maybe even at your local store. <clears throat> Next up we got some more Auto World ones. These are all, uh, sorry for the dust, but these have been in storage. And uh, here's just a regular Christine car. On a cardboard card in a blister, just a regular release, 58 Plymouth Fury, true 164 scale. So, I'll show you the back of the card. Just some more advertising for round two and other uh, racing champions stuff, but on the top it does have a little bit about the movie or quotes from the movie. Not sure if it's going to focus well enough for you to read that, but if you want to pause it and try, you're more than welcome to. So that's just a regular release. Then we have uh, some Miho exclusives. I have uh, this uh, blister and acrylic case version. Uh, Christine Miho exclusive, one of 3600. This is kind of like an ultra red, accurately scaled, die cast metal body chassis, opening hood. And it's it's got like a real deep uh, metallic red paint job, just like it would be an ultra red. But this is a Miho exclusive. And I'm sure they made a bunch of these Christine cars. Um, you know, there's probably multiple ones. Uh, there's a couple that I don't have. Like chase pieces and whatnot. So here's the back of the Miho exclusive version. A little bit more about the quotes from the movie. This one you should be able to read, so I'll pause it while you read it. Or I'll hold it still while you pause it so you can read it. Pretty cool. So there's another reason why I'd want to keep it in the packaging because it's just. You know, if I just took it out of the packaging, it does say Christine on the on the display inside the acrylic box. But uh, I th just like the Christine uh, graphics and the info from the movie. And then last but certainly not least is this really cool uh, Auto World uh, Miho exclusive. This is like the dirty, rusty version from the beginning of the movie before uh, Arnie finds the car and buys it. So this is Christine Miho exclusive, one of 4,800. And then uh, I think this one still has the opening hood, yeah. See, it's got the for sale sign in it. It's got uh, cuts in the body and rust. The roof is kind of rusty and paint is messed up a little bit. Looks like it doesn't have any hubcaps on it. It's missing like a headlight, all sorts of cool stuff. And it's got the for sale sign there on the packaging too. So that's pretty cool picture from the movie in the background. 
on the card here. And then more information, more pictures from the movie. A positive here if you want to read it. Try to get the dust off it. I might help you read it. <clears throat> there you go. Pretty cool. Just talking about this, uh, all these Christine cards is making me want to uh, go upstairs and fire up the Blu-ray player and watch it again. I've probably seen it about 50, 60 times. Very good movie. So that's it, guys, for this video. Uh, just a kind of a quick spotlight on some of my Christine collection. Like I said, I have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, different Christine cars from different makes. This is mostly Auto World stuff, Johnny Light and Green Light. But I do have a bunch more. So there'll be uh, part two to the uh, to this episode. It'll be like a second Christine collection. Probably make a playlist on the channel. Um, and have another uh, video or two on um, all my Christine car stuff. But check out these uh, dioramas. They're really cool. Definitely uh, worth checking out. From Johnny Lightning or Auto World. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Also check me out on my other uh, social media platforms. Check me out on Facebook, that Van Guy, and I'm that Diecast Van Guy on Instagram, that underscore Diecast underscore Van underscore Guy. So check me out there, and uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.